Hello, the apparition AOA. Hey, PDI. All right, are y'all doing okay? I'm, I've been so obsessed with uh, Fire Emblem lately. Oh my god. Playing, what, what a time to be alive. Playing two such amazing games. Like, seriously. Like, if, if you are a fan of Fire Emblem, like, I could say it's probably the best best Fire Emblem game I've ever played. And uh, and if you're not, then it's a perfect chat time to jump into the series because it's a brand new continuity. It's not connected to any of the older games so you won't be confused by, uh, you know, the story. And it is just amazing. Sorry to just shill that on an Umi Neko stream of all time, but I am having the time of my life playing that. And I am also having the time of my life Reading some Umi Neko here, because this, this, this story really is awesome. Hey, Nagels, how are you doing? Seriously. Really, I am really enjoying Umi Neko already. I can tell it's going to go all kinds of crazy places, and I can't wait to see where the mystery unfolds. I want to see if I'm right about uh, the whole hometown thing being uh, his room, being Kinzo's room. And the Sweetfish River is the candy dish, or something like that. And so, the clue to the key, whatever, now, I don't know what the key itself would end up being. But I'm pretty sure the key, once we know what the key is, it'll reveal, um, it'll reveal basically, you know, what, what it means by, you know, the, the killing the arm and the leg and something like that. Uh, it's probably something to do with some kind of statue or something. And um, who I'm guessing, I'm going to guess right now, whoever is doing all the murders is probably using the epitaph as like a cover or something to commit all their murders. That That's what I'm, and like, the, they probably want to find the gold too, or maybe there's a completely separate reason. That has to do with uh, the real Beatrice that Kinzo met. So, um, without further ado, do I think there's one murderer or several? I think that there's more than one incident. There's more than one incident going on, on the island. There's more than one, um... Group. Uh, happening during the night in question. I think that the, the blood stain in the dining room is completely separate from the, um... Mass murder in the, in the tool shed. For several reasons. One, because... There's no way, like, moving the bodies would have been insane. Hello, Mr. P. Welcome, MP. Uh, welcome to the stream. You caught me before I started. That's great. And um, basically, the reason why I think that is because moving the bodies would have been crazy. So I assume that... Oh, T, you're here early. Awesome. Welcome. Hello, Weebo. All right, you guys are so cool. And uh, basically, to um, imagine that um, they moved the bodies after death, like even if they were all poisoned or something, killed bloodlessly, and then the chopping and the butchering was done afterward, there's no way they moved the bodies. I'm going to bet they were either all lured to the tool shed or they were killed somewhere in a secret passage from the mansion to the tool shed or something like that. And there's some kind of secret under underground passage. And they were either killed in that underground area, which connected to the tool shed, and placed there. Or they were lured to the tool shed because somebody tricked them, the murderer tricked them, and um, then uh, they were all killed there. And I still think one of the four people who's 
faces looked completely destroyed. Is probably either working, is probably the culprit or working with the culprits. That's what I think. Because they probably disguised some some random body as uh, in their clothing with, with a similar build to them. And then chopped up the face so that uh, the, the other people wouldn't be able to tell it's them. Hey, Midmus. And then they did the same to all the other bodies, uh, you know, to mask that whole thing. T to mask that they were um, butchered for that purpose. So, we can, I'm pretty sure we can rule out the people whose faces were only half destroyed. So, it's one of those four, I think. Ironically, not, um, not Krauss, because his face was only half cut up. I do wonder who the culprit is then. But I think uh, that, so yeah, that's my long-winded theory of what's what's been happening so far. All right, it's been six and a half minutes. Let's, um, let's we got 14 people. I think it's a good time to start. I had been miss if I didn't say that before. Let's get back into it. Oh yeah, and I forgot to do uh, last time on. Uh, basically, we had a actually sweet scene between Eva and Hideyoshi that, you know, I had reservations before, but apparently they really do love each other, which is really sweet. And they're, they were going, um, <laughs> having uh, marital relations, as to put it lightly. And, uh, but based on the epitaph, uh, whether they'll make it through the night is extremely questionable. Uh, so, yeah, I've, I'm not sure if they're going to survive by morning. So, uh, let's see what Genji's doing. There was a knock on the door, and Genji-san entered. Madam, dinner has been prepared. Oh, yes, Afrishin and Natsuki's big CG with the gun. And it was uh, Natsuhi uh, versus Eva. And uh, whole Battler did his whole Phoenix Wright thing, too. That's right. That was awesome. I can tell he's probably going to be doing that again many times throughout, this, throughout the series, I bet, which will be pretty cool. He could probably be a lawyer. I could see that. Madam, dinner has been prepared. Will you eat in here again? Yes. Have it brought here. Is Dr. Nanjo still in the kitchen? Yes. Well, it was a cut-in. Oh, wait, not full CG, but close enough. <laughs> he has said he wishes to carefully deliberate over his next move. Wait. Do not worry, he is with the other servants. Genji-san's good enough at chess to be grandfather's opponent. I hear he's even better than Dr. Nanjo, right? That's right. Long ago, he played against me, but he must have let me win. Maria, sounds like it'll be time to eat soon. しかし, but look at you, you've been watching TV all day long, you still haven't gotten bored. It's 1986. There's really not much else to do. Woo woo. Unless they've got a uh, NES there. I'm always watching TV, so I'm fine. 
マリアちゃんはテレビっ子なんだね。マリアちゃん、超 is a TV kid。食事だから、机の上を片付けないとダメだぜ。フードカミング、so we have to clean up the table。Earlier, we had torn several pages out of Mario's notebook, and there was now a mess when everyone had been drawn, where, where everyone had been drawing together. Yeah, that's right, it'll be a Famicom. Yeah, oh, I. Are you serious, Nagels? Wait. I skipped number 13. Wait, what? No, I didn't. Did I? Oh, God, you're right. Son of a bitch.、Uh, hold on. You're right. There. Wow, we got 16 people already. Changed it. There. You all didn't see nothing. What are you talking about? It was always 13. You can't prove anything. Okay. <laughs> Jessica began cleaning that up quickly. Still, everyone here can really draw. Really can draw. I'd never guessed. Genji. Genji. Eva san tachi ni mo, seme te shokji kura i s h o ni shi nai ka to, o k o o kake nasa. Ask Eva san and Hideyoshi san whether they'd at least like to have dinner with us. Do se koto wa ru de shou ga. Although they will probably turn us down. They're going to be having marital relations, I presume. And interrupting that will kill us all, surely. Certainly. Oh, hello, Pika Blue. How are you doing? Thank you for coming. First father, no Eva san. Hello, Papa Jay. It's quite hard to gather everyone at the Ushiro Miyaki dinner table. Natsuhi felt her headache start throbbing again and lightly held her temples. The distance from the kitchen to the parlor wasn't that great, so Genji had gone and come back by himself, but the, gen- but the guest room was a little further away. Natsuhi had warned him to avoid being alone whenever possible, and just now Nanjo had admonished him. Saying it would be better if he had held just a little more concern for his safety. Kanon accompanied Genji, and the two of them went to visit Eva and Hideyoshi in their guest room. Oh boy. Wait, huh? Look at that. Is that. Is that like a clue in the CG right there? It looks like there's some marks on the doorframe. Genji knocked on the door. Eva Sama, Hideyoshi Sama. Eva Sama, Hideyoshi Sama. Dinner has been prepared. He waited a short time for them to come out, but there was no response. Genji Sama, Korewa. Genji Sama, look at this. Cannon pointed under the door. Oh boy! Who was. Okay! Hello, Shadow Tomberry! Welcome to the stream. Oh my god, who's here? Who's been here? It's. Oh god. A western envelope had been inserted under it. Normally, when something was inserted this way, it would be interpreted as a message from someone outside to someone in the room. So, since this might be a private note meant for Eva and Hideyoshi, it was not something that Kanon and Genji were supposed to take interest in. But this western envelope was one of Kinzo's. 
the same kind as the one Maria had taken out last night and surprised everyone with. Oh boy. Oh, a little trivia from OA. Uh, it turns out, in, yeah, in Russia they never had the <laughs> NES. They just had uh, a, a, like a bootleg of the Famicom called Dandy, which is played bootlegs <laughs> of NES games and fired. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, OA. There can be no mistake. It is one of the master's envelopes. Or could it be? Even though this was one of Kinzo's envelopes, the letter Mario read aloud the previous night hadn't come from Kinzo. Yeah, that's right, because uh, he gave, he threw the the ring with the stamp on it out the window, and presumably, quote unquote, Beatrice took it. Genji continued knocking a little harder, and called out in a loud voice. Ibasama. Hello, Ji Chan. Lovely to have you here. Oh God, just in time for what? Oh God. I bet they're dead. Oh god. Eva-sama. 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 Genji de gozaimasu. It is Genji. Irashaimasuka. Are you there? O henji wo onegai itashimasu. Eva-sama. Please answer. Eva-sama. But there was no response from inside. Sometimes when the servants wanted to call some guests for a meal, the guests would be sleeping so deeply that they wouldn't wake up. At times like that, the servants would stick a letter into the door and show that it was time to come out and leave the guests be. But despite that, Genji beat even harder on the door and called out Eva's name. However, there was no answer. Cannon stuck his ear up to the door, held his breath, and listened for any sounds coming from inside. See if I can move the microphone a little closer. I hear something that sounds like the television. But I don't sense anyone. The room might be empty. Yeah, Shadow Tomberry. <laughs> oh boy. Genji took out a handkerchief and, careful not to touch it with his bare hands, gently pulled out the envelope that had been stuck under the door. It was sealed with deep red sealing wax. Without a doubt, the mark on that sealing wax had come from the Ushuramiya family's head ring. Ibasama! 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Ibasama! Ibasama! That was, uh, Genji. <laughs> Please, answer. Are you still in your room? But there was still no answer. There was a chance that these two were aimlessly walking around the mansion. This was the home Eva had grown up in. There was plenty of reason to think that she had gone out on a casual stroll. Genji groped around in his pocket and pulled out the bundle of keys, which contained the key that would open the guest room. Genji-sama! Genji-sama! Cannon also understood what this meant. Are we gonna have a locked room murder here? I think we are. They would sometimes unlock the door so they could go in and do things like make the beds, but only after they make sure, made sure the guests were out. To unlock the door for any other reason? and especially to do so when there was a chance the guest hadn't given permission and might still be in there, was an action unbecoming of a servant. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing away! <laughs> Jesus. I, a, an unusual choice of words there! But Genji had decided. If the only problem had been that, that his knock hadn't received a reply, he wouldn't have gone this far. 
but the envelope under the door was doubtlessly one of Kinzo's. Or rather, one of the western envelopes of the Ushermia family had. After last night, the sender of this envelope could be someone other than Kinzo. If this letter had been sent by someone else... Eva-sama! Eva-sama! My apologies! Allow me to enter your room. Oh boy. What are we going to see here? After giving that final notice, Genji took one of the keys from the bundle into the keyhole. There was the sound of the door unlocking. And after slowly turning the knob, he slowly started opening the door. Light seeped in through the crack of the door. Were they in the room? Or had they forgotten to turn out the lights? Clank. It was the sound of the door chain being pulled tight. And oh, they chained the door too. Wow, this is like a hard mode locked room mystery if the fucking door chain is on. Jeez. The chain had been secured. The chain couldn't be secured from the outside. So it also proved that they were in the room. The sound of voices on the TV seeped out of the room. The lights, the chain, and the TV. All of these things made it clear that they were in the room. But there was no sign of them. Genji called to Eva once again through the crack of the door, but there was no answer. Genji-sama. Genji-sama. What should we do? As part of their job, the servants were able to unlock almost any lock in the mansion. But they had no way to open a door with a chain. The only way to get by the chain was to cut it. That was certainly not permitted as part of a servant's usual work. A creepy chill had already rushed up their backs. Cannon held his breath again and tried to send someone through the door, but even so, he was not able to sense anyone. I will call Madam and return. Cannon, cut the chain. Y yes As Cannon hurried away to get a cutting tool, Kenji Genji called him to a stop. Wait, Cannon. Return to the kitchen and take Kumasaba with you. You must not act alone. I'm not gonna let you die too. Yes. Certainly. It looked like Cannon was wondering why he had to do something so troublesome in the middle of this urgent situation. But Genji had said it out of wariness. He didn't care what happened to himself. But in the worst case scenario, he didn't want anything to happen to Cannon. Because if anybody could protect him, it's the old lady with a bad back. In the kitchen, Kumasawa was piling food on the serving cart. And Nanjo was waiting for Genji, apparently wanting to show him a move he'd finally thought of that might turn the tables around on him. But Genji's appearance immediately told him that something was wrong. Oh, what happened, Genji-san? Nanjo-sensei, Dr. Nanjo, my apologies, but please allow this match to be suspended for the time being. Cannon, take care of the chain. Kumasawa, stop setting up dinner for now and accompany Cannon. 
I will go over to Madam. If you would come with me, Dr. Nanjo. Has something happened? Genji took Nanjo, who still didn't know what was going on, and quickly left the kitchen. My apologies, but please come with me. What has happened, Kanon san? Kumasawa said almost the exactly the same thing as Nanjo, unable to take in the situation and chase after Kanon, who had flown out into the hallway. That's right, you guys. That you spoiled the fact that Kumasawa had a giant fish lightsaber to use on whoever's doing this shit. <laughs> She's secretly the murderer who has the secret fish powers. <laughs> oh, god damn it. I can't believe you spoiled the ending for me. <laughs> Taking Kumasawa with him? Cannon went to a storage room and looked through the tools packed in toolboxes and hanging all over the walls, trying to find something that could be used to cut the chain. What are you looking for? Let me help too. We're cutting a door chain. Where was that large wire cutter? A door chain? Why would you do something like that? The chain to Eva-sama and Hideyoshi-sama's room. Even though they should be inside, they didn't answer when we called them. It took some time. It took Kumasawa some time to figure out how cutting the chain and even Hideyoshi not answering were connected. But she did realize that this was an urgent situation. That one will probably do the trick. Cannon took down a very large wire cutter that had been hanging on the wall. It was called a cutter, but maybe it'd be easier to understand if we said it was shaped like a large pair of pliers. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what I thought they would get to. Also like a garden shears for trimming branches. I thought it was something they could get. Kana remembered once being warned that this dangerous tool could easily cut through one of your fingers. Kana took that and rushed up the stairs. He already knew instinctively. He should fight for every minute, every second to open it quickly. Or perhaps, it was already. Please wait, Kanon san! Hurry! Kumasawa eventually caught up with him, gasping for breath with both hands on her knees. When Cannon changed his grip on the wire cutters and looked up at the door, he let out an awe oh, struck speechless. Oh God! No, no, What? What is this? <laughs> oh God! Jesus Christ! Where did they find the time to do that? Kumasawa screamed weakly, her face pallid. That was no surprise, because right there on the door, just like the magic circle that had been drawn in the shutter of the Rose Garden storehouse, there was another eerie shape drawn with a blood-like paint. However, it would be odd to call this one a magic circle. Because unlike what most people would expect, it wasn't a circle with shapes drawn inside it. 
but a slightly more complicated geometrical shape. However, those strange characters filling in the gaps, which weren't from the alphabet, were the same kind as the ones from the magic circle on the shutter. But the thing that had Cannon struck speechless wasn't how eerie the magic circle was. It was that something like this hadn't been here a short while ago. When the fuck did they find the time to do this? How could anyone do that so quickly? My god. That is like some elaborate artwork, artwork shit. Like seriously, what the fuck? First, he had taken a trip back to the kitchen. After that, he'd gone to the storage room to grab a tool and had headed right back. Put those together, and it couldn't have been more than five minutes. Exactly, exactly. How could someone add something this creepy during that period of time? And though it had just been drawn, almost like the door itself was bleeding. Several unsettling vertical red lines slowly drift down, getting longer and longer. <laughs> oh god, poor old Kumasawa, oh god. Kumasawa's knees gave way. And she sank down on the spot. If Kumasawa hadn't done this first, then Cannon surely would have wanted to. Be Beatrice, Beatrice Samba. Beatrice Samba no shiwaza desu yo. Osoroshia, osoroshia. It's the work of Beatrice Samba. How horrid! How horrid! <laughs> <sighs> Cannon gulped, then readied the wire cutter and approached the door. He didn't want to get to cl he didn't want to get close to this disturbing magic circle, and he really didn't want to touch the steadily dripping substance that looked like blood. But if he didn't get close, he wouldn't be able to cut the chain. Fighting this cold, cold feeling, he gulped again, and after gathering his courage, he went even closer, putting the wire cutter up against the chain. He then pressed with all of his strength, managing to cut through the chain far more easily than he'd anticipated. The cut chain fell in two separate parts, which continued to clang as they swayed back and forth. Kanon-san, san there's an envelope by your feet. And isn't that the master's? It looked like Kumasawa had also noticed the western envelope at the bottom of the door, and that the sealing wax had been sealed with the head's ring. Cannon hesitated for just a second over whether he should open the letter first or check inside the room. But he eventually decided on fulfilling his original purpose. Cannon pulled a handkerchief out, uh, chef out of his pocket. This was so he wouldn't leave fingerprints on the door. If his worst fears were realized, the police would want to investigate this room too. He slowly pushed the door open. He was able to more clearly hear the sound of the television, which had sleep been seeping out faintly this whole time. Eva-sama. Eva-sama. Oh god, Ava was lying face up on the bed. On the bed with her shoes still on? Kumasawa, who had fearfully entered after Cannon and was hiding behind his back, 
screamed to eek again when she saw Eva like that. Eva's shoes had been the first part of Can her that Cannon had seen, so the oddness of wearing shoes in bed was the first thing to strike him. But when Eva's head shifted to, into his line of sight, Cannon could help, couldn't help but left, let out a short scream like Kumasawa. Oh God! Right in the middle of Eva's forehead, something had been placed. Something was growing there? Wait, no. Right in the center of her forehead. Oh, God. Was it an old-fashioned knife? That was some we weapon like it was sticking out. Yep. Oh, God. Yep. At the base of where it was stuck in, blood dripped down, staining the sheets on the other side bright red. Oh my god. So someone got her to lie down on the bed and then just shanked her straight through the forehead? How the fuck did they do that? How strong is this person? Oh my god. Kumasawa's knees gave way once more and she sank down on the floor. Her mouth kept flapping open and closed, but she couldn't even scream. Eva was dead, with some kind of weapon sticking out of her forehead. Both eyes were open wide, and the image of the person who killed her must have been buried in them. Burned in them. But only the only mouth capable of naming that person had been shut for all eternity. Even though her forehead was the last place they wanted to look, they couldn't tear their eyes from it. Right there, the weapon was struck into Eva's forehead, standing almost perfectly upright. And on the handle was a complicated design that you wouldn't expect to see on an ordinary weapon. That thing could be summed up with the word occult. It was a vulgar object with a design that might have been of some demon. I'm waiting. Uh, I, I will, Oe. I just. What about Hideyoshi sama? Hideyoshi sama! Eva was on top of her bed, but the other bed was empty. Hideyoshi escaped! Where was Hideyoshi? Is he in the closet or something, maybe? Before we check the bathroom for Hideyoshi, um... Let's check uh, Eva's death profile. All four children are dead. Oh god, that means Jessica is the top of the food chain. Yup, right in the middle of her forehead. Okay, no commentary on this one, I see. Found up on the bed of the guest room. On the bed of the guest room inside the mansion. With a weapon resembling an ice pick sticking out of her forehead. After taking a backwards glance at Kumasawa, still on her knees and stupefied, he checked the bathroom just in case. Oh my god. At the moment he opened the door, he was greeted by steam and the sound of the shower. Oh god. The bathroom was of the same familiar style as most hotel bathrooms. When taking a shower, a waterproof curtain was used to keep water from flying out. Oh god, what the f- Oh god! We see this one. Oh god, Hideyoshi has like a fucking drill stuck in his head. Fucking hell, oh god. The waterproof curtain was half open, and lying tumbled down in the bathroom bathtub was Hideyoshi, completely naked with both eyes open. And pointing right at Cannon. Oh my god! Just like Eva, a weapon with a demon like design was stuck into his forehead. So he's not alive. Oh god. Oh boy. His head had been under the shower's hot water this whole time. His face wasn't half covered and filthy with blood like Eva's had been. But the sight of him dead while still taking a shower was tragic enough. Just then they heard Natsuki's voice coming from the hall. She was probably coming with Genji. Again with this graffiti! 
What about the letter? What does it say inside? I don't know. I haven't read it yet. We shouldn't we shouldn't touch it carelessly. The culprit's fingerprints might be left on it. We should hand it over to the police. They went out of their way to leave it here. I'm sure they wouldn't have left fingerprints. As Natsuhi said that, she picked up the envelope. And before checking its contents, she entered the room herself, where she found Eva dead. Eva-san! Madam, Hideyoshi-sama is here too. Th this is truly atrocious. Cannon, turn off the shower. Don't let this be any more pitiful than it needs to be. Oh god, jeez. Yoshi did not deserve that. Even Eva, who was kind of a bitch. I uh, didn't want her to die. Because, jeez. Hi. Poor George. Imagine losing your fiance and your parents in the span of less than a day. My god. Ugh. My god, George must be a complete wreck. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that was Cannon. Yes, ma'am. Cannon gripped his handkerchief and twisted the valve, turning off the shower. In the bathtub, a small jar of body soap had fallen with his cap off. He really looked like he'd been attacked while taking a shower. There was still a small spat splash of blood clinging to the white bathtub, and the combination of red and white made a horrible contrast. Nanjo Sensei. Dr. Nanjo. Alright, we got 25 people. That's awesome. I understand. No signs of postmortem lividity. Rigor mortis hasn't begun either. It would seem that an hour or so has passed since they were killed. Okay, you know what, Pika Blue? Uh, this is a kind of a personal thing for me. He's not a coroner. He's a GP. So, you know what? As someone who has uh, been a, a bioscience major, I, I've, I've had to deal with all the time relatives and shit asking me random stuff about sciences that I have no clue about because... I'm, a, I'm in molecular biology and genetics. They're asking me about all this crazy kinds of shit in chemistry and like, uh, like my opinion is like, like guys, 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 guys. Scientists are not like the scientists you see on TV where one scientist knows their specialty in fucking every science they come across on the show. Uh, scientists are very, very, very specialized in their fields. Especially modern times, because there's so much to know in each field. Like, oh god. So you know what? You gotta give Nanju a break. Seriously. Because this is not his field, examining dead bodies. He's, he examines little, uh, little ones. Ah, uh, not little ones, living ones. Shh. I know, Pika Blue, I, I'm not, I'm not seriously mad at you. I just, I just wanted to get that out. And, um... It's just like, um, that's a specific field, he, he diagnoses, he looks at, um, symptoms, he knows what tests to order, and, you know, he can recommend people to specialists and prescribe some medicine. 
and you know, and things like that. That's his job as a GP. And uh, so, dude. <laughs> but to examine dead bodies is, I imagine, something he probably has no experience with at all. Maybe like he might have attended one lecture on it in med medical medical school. But, Due to a requirement? I'm not sure. I've never gone to medical school. See. An hour or so has passed since they were killed. Is it? But even so, her weapon with such a short handle could do that to the skull. I could not imagine exactly what I was thinking, Nanjo. How strong would you have to be to plunge a knife through someone's skull? My god. Nando checked their pulse and their pupils, making certain of their deaths once more. As Cannon watched this business-like treatment, he thought, couldn't you tell at a glance they're dead without doing all that? Nanjo thought about removing the weapon, but then decided it'd be better to preserve the scene and hand it over to the police, so he left it alone. That makes perfect sense. It looks like a... Can I get a better view of that? God damn it! See, when I take the text box off, the stupid options thing goes here, so I can't see. What the hell? It looks like some kind of drill or something. It really looks like a drill, more than a knife. But a close inspection of the base showed that it didn't have a blade. In fact, it was more conical than blade-shaped. Okay, thank god! Th that was driving me crazy! Yeah, it's like a drill. Yeah, okay. Oh, a spear. Yeah, that too. It's a conical uh, spear here. He noticed that rather than a knife, it was more like a short-handed spear. Thing was shaped better suited for thrusting than slicing. Rather than a short spear, you might call it a thick ice pick. At any rate, after looking at this scene, no further words were needed to describe what sort of terrible purpose such eerily designed weapons were originally made for. Nor was it necessary to explain how they carried out their function. Ugh, oh god. Natsuhi, hoping to escape the repulsive steam filling the bathroom as soon as she could, covered her mouth with a handkerchief and dashed from the room. Oh god, poor George! Well, where is George? I'm just so worried about George. Exactly, Minmus. By the way, welcome to the stream, Minmus. <laughs> viewing their gruesome bodies for an instant had been enough to burn this image into her eyes. If she looked any longer, that image would surely remain in her vision for all eternity. The, rise to, the rising urge to vomit was exactly the same feeling she'd had that morning at the gardening storehouse. For a while, Natsui couldn't help but stand with her back, facing the guest room, fighting that sickness in her stomach. At, at any rate, we can't let the children... We can't let George couldn't see this room. Exactly, Natsuki. Exactly. It's okay, Oe. You don't have to. Seal this room with all haste. <laughs> yes, we mustn't let them see. If George-san saw his parents in this brutal state, 
but they could tell those fiercely racing footsteps in the hallway belonged to George, even before he came dashing into the room. Oh god, poor George. Ryoshi? That's right, that means also she's the last spouse. Oh, that means oh, she's the only adult left alive that's related to the family. Oh my god! There's more dialogue here. Found in the bathroom, the same guest room that Eva was found in. Like Eva, there was a weapon resembling an ice stick sticking out of his forehead. You can't see either of them by looking through the gap at the door while the chain is set. You can't see them, so you can't reach them. Hey! Haze? Wait, does that say Haze? Haze, how could a human possibly kill them? <laughs> yep, this is definitely... This is definitely Maria. Oh gosh, jeez. There's gotta be secret passages. George and the other children had been waiting in the parlor. However, when they saw Genji speak to Natsuhi, when they saw her turn pale and fly out of the parlor, they'd felt a sense of foreboding. And when they saw a large group of people gathered around the guest room, they were sure of it. Oh God, George, no. I see your text, MP. I see your text. Uh, the last thing you said was Goda isn't that good, too. Father! Mother! What is this? Another magic circle. Oh god. Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi are safe, right? Hey, Kanon kun What's this all about? Oh god, that Butler Sama. Oh god. Hannah didn't have to say anything. George screamed after he ran into the room, told them everything they needed to know. <laughs> oh god, poor George, how is he gonna stay sane? Oh god, oh god, I w if, he, if I was him, oh god, Jesus Christ. But this poor baby, oh George. Oh god. Who? Who did this? I'll kill you! I'll kill you! George Kuhn, hang in there. Natsuhi touched George's shoulder with her hand, but he violently shook her off. George fell over beside Eva and bur buried his face in the bed in front of his mother's face, wailing. Then he pounded on the bed with his fist, over and over again. George Nissan! Hang in there. 
バトラはバトラバトラ様バトラ様バトラ had his back against the wall of the hallway and was covering his eyes with his right hand and weeping without restraint oh wow these deaths are really affecting him horrible he did that's horrible kokoro ni kimeta ka koyaku shita tsuki no hi ni ushinatta he proposed to the girl he loved and lost her the next day And on the same day, even his mom and dad were killed. Isn't that too harsh? Of course, it's sad whenever anyone dies, no matter who it is. But to Battler, those left alone by the deaths of others were far more worthy of pity. Everyone here now had lost someone close to them. George wasn't the only one to be pitied. However, George's pain was far greater than everyone else's. Oh god, George. Butler. I know. Everyone dies sooner or later. If you're human, you'll eventually reach a time when you've got to fight the sorrow of losing someone close to you. But still, shouldn't that day be far in the future for Aniki? And shouldn't those deaths visit him one at a time? Horrible. It's too horrible. That bastard, that bastard. Doesn't he have even a speck of human sympathy in him? Oh, God. Oh my god, Batman. Oh. Maria, Jesus Christ. She's probably desensitized. Because of her mom. Oh god. Woo! Batra, nakanai, nakanai. Batler, don't cry, don't cry. Maria tried to confront ba comfort Batler. In a mechanical sounding voice, Battler violently wiped his tears. Uh, yeah! <laughs> Damn it! I won't cry anymore! Tears of regret, tears of sadness, I won't shed them again! Which has got me back into a corner. I'm always on the defensive. That's useless. It's all useless. Ah, uh, there's Zen Zen Damida. I can see why that's a famous phrase here. Spin the chessboard around. That bastard probably thinks we'll be running scared like sheep until tomorrow, before we try anything. But guess what? I'll spin it around! That bastard can't escape this island until tomorrow either! Oh, 
We won't be hiding away, pissing ourselves. That bastard will! I'll expose you, you'll see! By tomorrow. No. Fuck tomorrow! Tonight! Before tonight's over, I'll be gripping you by the collar! <sighs> Poor George. He's probably inconsolable. His whole immediate family is dead. Oh, God. At any rate, we lock this room and leave everything it is until the police come. Yes, ne? No objections, I take it. Natsuki announced it as though she didn't care whether they agreed or not. If anyone had a right to object, it would have been George, but he looked as though he'd shed enough tears. George nodded slightly, still facing away from the others. And when he stood up, everyone else agreed too. Natsui still hadn't opened that western envelope of the family head that she'd picked up. But now that they decided to leave this room, she decided to unseal it in the parlor where everyone could watch. As soon as they walked out into the hallway to head back to the parlor, some of them immediately felt something out of place, or maybe sensed something strange. Uh, uh, stinks? Oh god, are more people dead? Uh, Ah, did you notice it too, Maria? <laughs> Seriously, what that what's that smell? It's awful. When everyone sniffed the air, they did notice a horrible burnt smell drifting through the hallway, one that none of them had smelled until then. <laughs> I will go quickly to check the kitchen. I'm sure I turned the flame off. After noticing a burnt smell, it was natural that Kumasawa, who had just been using the burner in the kitchen, suspected that her own slip-up had caused it. And uh, OBS fucked up. Oh god, I'm so sorry. God damn it, OBS. Oh god. Did you miss anything? Did you guys miss anything? God damn it. I missed a line. Okay. Kumasawa hastily dashed away. I'll just read back the last few lines. Here we go. Okay. All right, back here. After noticing a burnt smell, it was natural that Kumasawa, who had just been using the burner in the kitchen, suspected that her own slip-up had caused it. Kumasawa hastily dashed away. Karen, go with Kumasawa. Do not let her be alone. I yes After nodding at Genji's order, Cannon followed after her.
He wasn't running, but as he followed her, he tried to search for the cause of the smell in other directions as well. Uh, uh, I... Stinks! Could be something sulfury. I don't know. Uh, uh. It surely is a stench that makes the nose wrinkle. However, that doesn't mean we just can open a window for ventilation. Natsuhi was so re was reluctant to open the windows in a situation where self-defense was so important. Let us run the fan. I do not believe there will be any need to open the windows. George Aniki. Is it okay if I talk to you? If it's about finding the culprit, then I have no problems. It seems George had managed to climb out of the abyss of sorrow. All that filled his chest now was the quiet flame of hatred towards the culprit who had stolen the lives of the one he loved and his beloved parents. The chain for this room was set! From what I could tell by looking at it, I'm positive that it couldn't be opened from the outside. In other words, this was a perfect closed room. That does seem to be the case. In the case of the Rose Garden storehouse, they might have sneaked the shutter's key out of the servant room. Or maybe they had a duplicate key. I can imagine the many ways they could have done it. But this chain is different. Among generally used locking techniques, a chain is sim the simplest one to create a closed room with. Only a chain will block everyone coming from the outside, as long as it isn't, as it isn't physically broken. So, does this mean that the copper couldn't have gone in or out through the door? That's interesting. Just a few hours ago, I seem to remember everyone making a fuss over how to enter a room without using the door. Back then, we were all losing our cool, wondering how Grandfather had disappeared from his room. The receipt Aunt Eva stuck in the door, on a whim, proves that the door had remained sealed. And since Aunt Natsuhi was the only person to enter or exit during that time, she was under suspicion. Aunt Eva proposed a theory about how Aunt Natsuhi might have thrown Grandfather out the window, and then left by the door herself. But this door is much simpler. It was sealed from the inside by the door chain. The window had also been locked from the inside, and the bodies had been in the room. This time it really had been, without exaggeration, a true closed room. That's right. If you include grandfather's disappearance, three cases have occurred, and all three times, 
the door has been this, the point of interest. The first was a shutter. There was a key in the servant room. And if we assume someone knew about that, this can't really be called a closed room. I think that key is a red herring. I think there's secret passages. If there are no secret passages, I have no clue, honestly. The next was the door sealed by the receipt. However, Anatsuhi entered the room. So if Grandfather had left through the window had been thrown out, she would have been able to lock the window before escaping. Or, like my theory, Grandfather could have hidden until the receipt was gone and left the room later. Basically, the store can be defeated with a handful of desperate tricks. In that sense, you really can't call this one a closed room either. And now we have the door sealed with the door chain. Finally, we have to give up. The window, the door, everything had been locked. It was a perfect closed room. The first hadn't been a closed room because everyone could be suspected. The second had been a closed room because Aunt Natsuhi could be suspected. But this time, no one could be suspected. This was a perfect closed room because the door chain formed a seal that blocked everyone equally well. In that case, did the culprit carry out the crime without entering the room? With some method from the outside the from outside of the room. Good point. Even though the chain makes it impossible to open it wide enough for the door at present to fit through, you can open it in a small crack. But seriously, the way the bodies were laid out rules that out immediately. Unless you, uh, like, seriously. It, uh... They were clearly very deliberately killed and, like... <sighs> Thank God. Nokuste. Did the culprit knock on the door to make them peer out before attacking them? Wait, am I missing something? Yeah, you are. If Antifa's body had been lying right next to the door, then it might have been possible. Right, exactly. But she was on the bed at the back of the room. And Uncle Hideyoshi was even in the bathroom. Looking from the crack in the door, you couldn't even see them. And you couldn't reach them with your hands either. <laughs> Damn it, it's all useless! I don't have a clue! Something was tugging softly at my sleeve. It was Maria. Oh! Oh! Satisfied? What do you mean, satisfied? Seriously, she is unfazed by all of this. Unbelievably. <laughs> Butler, since you didn't want to suspect any of your relatives, you made a wish, saying you wanted the culprit to be Beatrice, right? 
らベアトリーチェは叶えた。Well, Beatrice granted that wish. バトラが言った通り、絶対に人間には無理なことをして、バトラに魔女の存在を信じさせてくれた。Just as you asked, she did something that was completely impossible for a human to make you believe in the witch. And now you're complaining? How selfish. <laughs> Ouch! I tapped Maria, who was laughing unpleasantly. On the head with my fist. You know, seriously, Battler. This is different from what. Completely different from what、uh, Rosa was doing. Sure, thanks for granting that wish. That just now was to thank you. And to teach you for, to stop laughing when it's inappropriate. Sorry, I'm s o r r More importantly, tell me. Is he gonna ask her how she knew about how the bodies, about how the faces were all cut up? I'm still wondering,、uh, how did she know all the faces were cut up in the storage shed?、Uh. Eva Oba san Tachino Hiano Tobirani. Mata Ayashigena Rakuaki a Sarateta. There was another mysterious scribble on the door to Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi's room. Was that another magic circle? <laughs> that one had a really memorable and characteristic design, so I'd hope you'd at least know what it was. I don't know, which is why I'm letting you take the credit. Quit whining and explain. You sure are violent, Battler. I won't tell you if you're too mean. Got it? Ouch! <laughs> I'll say it, I'll say it. Stop hitting me. That's the first magic circle of the moon. What does it mean? What is this magic circle's effect? What does the Hebrew writing mean? The words are from the Old Testament. Psalms 107, verse 16. Shua, no tobira o yabri, tets no can the key o uchi abut de kudasai masta. For he has broken gates of brass and cut through bars of iron. This magic circle has two effects. First, it can open a door regardless of which method has been used to lock it. That sure is convenient. <laughs> So you're saying that they're trying to make it look like they're a witch? Because this closed room has a door that can't be opened without relying on magic? And the other effect? When you're blocked by unopenable doors in all directions, it opens a door. By using it in a difficult situation, it gives you a solution you hadn't even thought of until then. Just as 
Generally speaking, you receive the powers of observation and discernment, inspiration and intuition. <laughs> Beatrice is trying to provoke you, since there's no way lowly humans like Battler could figure out how this door was opened. Okay, good work, so shut up. Sounds great. I'll accept this challenge from the witch. Mario chan. Mario chan. Things like witches and demons do not exist in this world. Someone killed father and mother. Sorry, I don't know whether that was someone I knew or not. Demo, so no dochira de atomo. Canarazo ningen nanda. But either way, it was definitely a human. Shikashi, do ya te? Yeah, but how? せいぜい10センチ程度しか開かないトビラの隙間からどうやったら室内の2人を。How did they reach those two that that crack in the door? Could have been more than 10 centimeters wide. それにしても耐え難い匂いです。At any rate, I can hardly stand this stench. 一体何事なのですか? What in the world could it be? Sounds like it smells like sulfur, maybe. Sounds like it smells like sulfur, is what I mean. Kanan and Kumasawa, who had gone on ahead, realized the smell wasn't coming from the kitchen even before they arrived there. And that was because they noticed an even thicker wave of scent rising up from the stairs leading to the basement, which they pressed on from their way to the kitchen. Boirast. The boiler room. I wonder if there's something wrong with the boiler again. Those stairs led to the underground boiler room. The mansion's boiler was old and in poor condition. Both of them had witnessed problems with the boiler on several occasions, but they had never smelled the boiler belching out a stench like this before. Slam. What? What was that sound? The thing they heard from the basement was definitely the sound of a door closing. Oh, shit. Are they trapped? Oh, God. Kumasawa had phrased it as a question, but she already knew it couldn't be anything else. Kumasawa was so surprised at the sound that her knees gave way yet again as she cowered. After all, at the very moment, moment, no one could have been in the boiler room. Just a few seconds ago, everyone had been crowded together around Eva and Hideyoshi's room. So what caused the sound of a door closing just now? <laughs> Kanon san! Kanon san! After taking a second to sort out the situation, Cannon ran down towards the basement. Since they heard the sound of a door closing just now, and there was no sign of anyone coming up the stairs. The person who closed the door had to be inside the boiler room now. If the boiler room had been a dead end, Cannon wouldn't have rushed in so hastily. But Cannon was a servant, so he knew. There were two entrances to the boiler room, one that opened to the mansion and one that opened to the courtyard. 
If he didn't chase them now, they might slip away. Kumasawa reached the same conclusion long after Cannon did, but she couldn't let him go alone. If the thing in the boiler room was the culprit, an opponent who had easily killed six adults in the first murder, then no matter how Cannon confronted them, he wouldn't be a match. Of course, with this argument, even if Kumasawa joined him, it wouldn't change anything. Exactly. At any rate, after a delay, Kumasawa decided that she mustn't let Kanan go alone, and she rushed down the stairs. Oh boy. Oh god, poor Kanan. Oh god. At the time, Kanan was already in the boiler room. The boiler room's characteristic damp heat tormented him. It had always been an unpleasantly smelly and hot place. And on top of that, this room was full of that horrible stench, which made Cannon feel like he was going to be sick. There was no doubt that this room was the source. In that case, Cannon should have been searching for where the smell was coming from. However, Cannon kept gazing straight forward as he grabbed a hatchet from a tool shelf just off to the side of the door. He hadn't stretched out his hand because he'd wanted a hatchet. He'd wanted to grab a weapon. Any weapon. Why? Oh, God. My poor baby. Cannon gazed into the darkness where the naked light bulb couldn't pierce. Then, he answered. Duretwa. Oh my god! Oh wait, you're right! A hatchet and the hat! Oh my god! You're right! Oh my god! He is the successor to my baby girl, Rena! Oh my god! I knew I liked him for some reason. Oh my god. Alright, Cannon, time to show off your badass ninja skills! Time to make the Uchiha clan proud! Here we go, come on. You can do it, I, I, I believe in you. In roulette, you bet on a number of, or the colors, red or black, vying for a payoff. However, low risk bets like black and red only offer a similarly low payoff. And even their clothes look similar. Oh wow, you're right, jeez. The words coming from Cannon's mouth were swallowed up by the darkness. That darkness suddenly started to swirl, glittering. Oh, holy fuck. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. It was such a fantastical scene. Golden, sparkling blood butterflies that sh hid in the shadows all over the boiler room flapped their wings, twinkling beautifully, and gathered in the darkness, disappearing. Cannon continued speaking, directing his words at the darkness, as it swallowed the butterflies up. But as the butterflies gathered in the darkness, they, perhaps, probably, no, they would certainly laugh. But Cannon continued to speak without faltering in the slightest. However, the goddamn pauses even follow me here. Jeez. However, if you bet on something with a lower probability, your payoff increases proportional to the risk. Time to be badass! I'm calling it right. Sorry, I'm calling it right now. Cannon is is gonna be the successor to my baby girl. Let's see. 
He is being so cool right now. Seriously. The master called succeeding despite an astronomical risk. A miracle. その結果得られる天文学的な配当を魔法と呼んでいた。And called the astronomical payoff gained as a result magic。親方様とお前がどんな魔法を求めてルーレットに挑んでいるのか。I そんなことには興味ない。God damn pauses again。I have no interest in what kind of magic you and the master were seeking when you spun that roulette. しかし、お前は忘れている。But you forgot something. ルーレットには、赤でも黒でもない目が出うることを忘れている。That in roulette, there is a pocket that's neither black nor red. Roulette has a special pocket called Zero. Exactly, Minmus. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Sadly. But it's still badass, the scene. Which means that the house takes everything in certain variants of the game. This means that all of the coins but on the table will be swept up, just as though everyone has forfeit. Bokwa. I set my heart on just one thing. I decided that if Shannon were to be killed and I was left alive, I'd sacrifice this life of mine and bring this roulette of yours to ruin. Oh, he is so badass! Oh my god, Cannon! Oh my god, he's so badass! This isn't one of the master's rules, and it certainly isn't one of yours! I made this rule myself! Oh! Yes, 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 yes! I'm not furniture anymore! Yes! Oh my god! I'm the zero on your roulette! Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my god, oh god, he is such a badass. Oh god, seriously. Cannon's face twisted with humiliation. It was clear that his defiance against his own weakness was being ridiculed somehow. Cannon's brow creased even further, and a fierce expression that he'd never shown to anyone appeared on his face. The hand grasping the hatchet was shaking. His sweat became drops which slid downward. It was clear that the emotion causing Cannon's hand to shake wasn't just anger. However, Cannon suppressed that emotion. <laughs> I won't let your words lead me astray again. This is where the demon's roulette ends! Wait another thousand years in hell for your next summoner, Beatrice! Cannon raised the hatchet and tried to dive into the darkness. The darkness defiantly sneered. It sneered at the courage if it were vulgar, lazy, futile, and meaningless. Oh my god. What's going on? Oh god. Do we have Flowey the Flower here? Oh god, jeez. What's going on? Oh my god. The laughing sound was in the original too. Oh my god. Cannon, his hatchet still le a l held aloft. Couldn't take another step after that. Oh no, was he killed? Oh no. With a clang, 
The hatchet he'd been grasping fell and rolled on the floor. Oh, he's... Oh, no, did he die? And following that with a pair of thuds, Kenna's knees hit left and then right. That hand, which looked at it like it was trying to catch the sky, now that the hatchet had been dropped, gradually lowered, landing on his chest. <gasps> then the other hand did the same. Oh no! Oh god! God damn it! Fucking hell! Oh, fuck you, Beatrice! Oh god. Fuck you! Seriously? Oh god, no, okay. You killed Shannon and Cannon, my, my freaking two, my two favorite characters. Oh god, Jesus Christ. Right there, a handle with this demon shaped design was buried into his chest. The same type of weapon that had stabbed Eva into Eva and Hideyoshi's foreheads was in Cannon's chest. Oh, God damn it! God damn it! Seriously? No! Come on! I'm sorry that I got cut for you, Apparition. It looks like, um... Oh, God damn it! Seriously? No! Oh God, no, no! <sighs> Fucking hell! <sighs> Cannon was curled up in anguish, fresh blood dripping from the corner of his mouth. It was makeup too extreme for Cannon's white skin. Oh God. Fuck you, Beatrice. Fuck you. He tried. He tried. Around the scene, the glittering gold butterflies danced through the darkness, mem mesmerizing. It was a beautiful, beautiful dance. A funeral march of tribute, ridicule, and contempt for a single boy's self-sacrifice. Cannon had already been prepared for his own death. Oh, God, no. But although he could do nothing but accept the death he had received, he attempted one last measure of resistance. He grasped the handle of the weapon sticking into his chest with both hands. And gritting his teeth with an acute, unearthly pain, he pulled it out! Oh god, that just means he's gonna die faster! Oh god. Oh god, jeez. For only a moment, a bright red spray gushed out. It made an unpleasant bloop sound. Oh god damn it! It probably resembled the sound of Kenan's soul as it was sucked into the swamp of the dead. Cannon son. <laughs> Hello, Happy D. Oh, God. God damn it. Someone. <laughs> oh, no. Oh god. God damn it! Ah! <laughs> 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 
Kumasawa screamed at the incomprehensible sight in front of her. Cannon was lying in a pool of blood. Kumasawa's heart was in a complete mess. Oh, what a horrible fate. He would have been, wouldn't have been killed if I had been with him. What incredible luck. If I had been with him, I might have been killed too. As she screamed, her expression was filled with complete confusion, and all of the muscles of her face were pulled up, almost as though she was smiling while crying. Oh, God. But no one could have made fun of an expression like this. What is it, Kumasawa? Answer me, Kumasawa! Oh, God. God damn it! The first one to dash in was Natsui, holding the rifle. Battler and Genji just dashed in after her. Normally, they probably would have started discussion discussing the origin of that violent stench filling the boiler room. But after they saw Cannon, who was lying on the ground as if he were drowning in an ocean of his own blood, the stench wasn't important anymore. Cannon! Answer me! Genji, bring Dr. Nanjo over here! Natsuhi realized that even though Cannon was on the verge of death, he was still conscious, so she sent Genji to get the doctor. Natsuhi, holding the rifle aloft, facing the, faced the darkness in the center of the boiler room and shouted, Who was hiding over there? Come out quietly! If you don't come out from there, I'll shoot without mercy! We need light! Anatsui, let's light him up! Battler, thinking quickly, took a large flat light, flashlight from the tool shed, a tool shelf, sorry, alongside the door, and used its light, light to cut through the darkness Natsuhi was glaring into. Oh god, Cannon, I'll always remember you as a freaking badass. Oh god. But the light only shone a mechanical looking piping in a door. The door had been left open a small crack, and it was obvious that someone had left through there in a hurry. <laughs> Anatsuhi, where does that door go? Genji! Genji! Where does that door lead to? The, the courtyard. Like hell, you'd get, a, you'd get away, you damn bastard! Battler let out a war cry as he slammed into the, do into the door. Cold air from the outside suddenly rushed in. There were some thin, rough stairs leading up. Battler ran up them, shouting, Wait, battler -kun. It's dangerous to be on your own right now! Natsui was also rushing up the stairs, chasing after Battler. They were in the courtyard. The courtyard of the mansion had been built strictly for lighting purposes. Lightning. Wait, lighting purposes. Okay. So it wasn't in a very elegant place. Because it was surrounded on all sides, the air was calm and completely undisturbed, even though they could hear the sound of strong winds. There was only the gentle, sorrowful rain. As he ran through the cold and scattered raindrops, Dashing up the stairs into the courtyard, Battler looked in every direction. Of course, the odds of him finding a suspicious silhouette just standing around nonchalantly were pretty much zero. Battler spun, looking all around. He turned again and again. He kept spinning until he almost lost all sense of direction. He prayed that he would see the culprit somewhere in this scenery, but there was no chance. 
All he saw as he spun was more and more of the mansion's heartless walls and windows. Furthermore, there were two entrances into the mansion from the courtyard, and neither of them were locked. Because the courtyard couldn't be entered from outside the mansion, the doors had been built without locks. He didn't know which one they had left through. He had to give up. Battler pounded on his on the wall with his fist, sweat swearing. Batraku. Battler Kun. You mustn't run ahead by yourself. Batraku. Battler Kun. Battler pressed his forehead against the wall, while he scratched with his finger fingernails as he cried. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! Damn it! I I didn't check Cannon's bio because he it didn't look like he was dead yet. He was like slowly dying. See, look, he's not he's not dead yet. Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi. And now Cannon Kun! You killed a full six people. And that wasn't enough, so you had to kill three more! Are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me?! Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi were always kind and fun! I just met Kenning yesterday, but I'm sure I've gotten along fine with him! Why did you kill them?! Why? Why?! <laughs> you know, when people die, they don't come back to life again, right? They aren't gonna quickly spread up again like bamboo shoots! Why'd you kill them? Why? Why? <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking that exact quote. Oh, wait. I didn't want to ruin the moment, though. I was thinking that exact quote. Oh, God. Battler was a boy who could understand the feelings of pain and regret in a person's heart. So he cried. With all his strength. Natsuhi, who had always thought of Battler as a frank person, was a little surprised to find he had this delicate side. Yeah, inside, Battler is just a big sweetheart inside. Oh, God. And at the same time, she understood how easily hurt the heart of a young person could be. So she held him. It's all right. I will definitely protect you, George Kuhn, Mario Chan, and Jessica. As a mother, and as the representative of the Ushiromiya family. <laughs> God, Battler. Oh God, jeez. Oh wow, we got 27 people, that's awesome. 
Fatler after sobbing into Natsui's chest for a while. Wiped his tears with a bitter smile, as though he'd been like that the whole time, and tried to appear as though he'd cried and more than enough already. Anyway, let's go back down for now. Protecting ourselves is a higher priority than finding the culprit. Tomorrow, the boat will arrive. After that happens, the police will come, and everything should be brought to light. There's no way the culprit can escape this island. No matter how much they struggle. That's right. When the police come. When the seagulls cry, the crime will be solved. But for some reason, Battler felt a slight sense of uneasiness, as if the seagulls would never cry again. That couldn't be true. When the typhoon passes, surely the lively seagulls will return to the harbor again. I returned to the boiler room along with Aunt Natsuhi and told everyone weakly that we hadn't found anything. We heard that Dr. Nanjo and George Aniki had carried, carried Kanankun to the servant room. The servant room has a first aid kit and a sink and could apparently function as the nurse's office. Kumasawa-san and Jessica had accompanied them. Stains from Kanankun's blood remained on the floor. Judging by the large amount of blood lost and the ruthless shape of the weapon that had fallen care carelessly to the ground, I figured that Dr. Nanjo's treatment would probably end in vain. That weapon was doubtlessly the same type that had been stuck in Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi's foreheads. But wait, isn't the demonic design on the handle a little different? There seemed to be some small differences in that part. Still, as far as the overall shape was concerned, the weapons were all of the same type. Though, as it had seemed brutal, we left the weapons stuck in Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi to preserve the crime scene. So this was the first time we were able to have a perfect view of the entire weapon. As we had expected, the weapon was not bladed like a knife but shaped like an ice pick. Or rather, a thin steak. Is it a harpoon? And yet, and it had a spiral-shaped pattern, sort of like a drill. Okay, thank you! I thought I was going crazy for a second. Yeah, it did look like a drill. It looked like it had something that had been might be driven into the hearts of human sacrifices in some demonic ritual. Including the handle, it was 25 centimeters long. Half of that was the stake-shaped part, part, which was stained with deep red blood. Oh, God. The length of the blood-stained part made it clear just how deeply it must have penetrated into Kanankun's chest. But Aunt Natsuhi and the rest didn't even look at the weapon, and instead stood in front of the incinerator, where the horrible stench was emanating from. They must have dragged it out. Dragged out that thing which had been burning in the furnace. What, I wonder what it is. Huh, interesting. It was still smoldering and kept sending out dense waves of that awfully unpleasant smell. Genji-san and Maria stared down at it, 
Aunt Natsugi probably couldn't stand to look directly at it. She kept shaking her head, her back to it. <coughs> what is it? I thought nothing could surprise me after everything that's happened. But this is... Uh. I stood there for a while, moaning with a rising urge to vomit. The true source of that unearthly stench with a scorched corpse. Oh my god, is it the grandfather? Oh my god, that had been cooking inside the incinerator. The clothes, the surface of the body, and the hair were all hideously burned. That grotesque corpse was in a state where not the face, nor the age, nor even the gender could be guessed at. Okay, so they have no idea who it is. But I, when I thought about it calmly, I realized that a corpse appearing at this time could only be one person. It was grandfather, who had disappeared that morning, and whose whereabouts had been unknown. It didn't have to, it doesn't have to be. It could be, but I'm not gonna s I'm not gonna hundred percent say it, it's him. I believe. It is most likely the master. I agree. That he would pass away in such a state. It's heart-rending. But is there any proof that this corpse really is grandfather? It's burnt so black you can't even tell what sex it is. Butler Coon, look at the feet. Anatsugi, with her handkerchief over her mouth and her eyes averted, pointed and told me to look at the burnt corpse's feet. Really? Oh my god, he has polydactyly. I didn't know that. Huh. Notice how there are six toes on each foot. Huh? Oh, oh. oh you're right. Just as Genji-san had said, there were six toes on each foot. Each individual toe had looked so normal in its line, I hadn't noticed. The master was born with six toes on both of his feet. Consequently, the master was entrusted with the revival of the Ushiromiya family. Really? I don't think that was the reason. Wasn't the reason because he survived the earthquake and everything? I've heard that since long ago. Cases of polydactyly were common in the Ushimiya family. It's probably hereditary. So then that means it could be someone else, too, in the family. If it's hereditary in the family. It could be someone else as well. It could be a bunch of other people. Then, if that's the case. Polydactyly literally means many fingers. Because of a little mistake by God when the person is born, one of their toes or fingers split into two, and the total number increases. Yep, I know that. But a big deal isn't usually made of polydactyly in the world at large. That's because it isn't a disease, just something people are born with. So while there are still babies, or about the time they turn one year old, they can be taken to the hospital and given surgery to make them normal. Even a child with polydactyly can be treated before they become aware, so they might not even remember it themselves. By the way, it seems there's a possibility for this to occur in one out of every 2,000 babies. So even though it's not usually seen, it isn't that rare at all. Speaking of which, I think Uncle Hideyoshi mentioned something to me long ago. Something though, even to Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the man who unified 
Japan at the end of the Sengoku period had six figures on one hand. Exactly, peak of blue. It's like, yeah, I agree away, by the way. He's taking us on a little tangent, some little trivia. We're, we're on a little trivia break about um, uh, genetic mutations. According to Natsuhi, among the many Ushirumiya family heads, the ones most praised for their wisdom all had polydactyly. Interesting. Because of that, when grandfather was born, his relatives were all excited at the thought that he might become another wise leader. Interesting. Okay. And when the leading relatives all died in the great Kanto earthquake, it was apparently argued that grandfather should be the one to restore the family because of the auspicious sign of his birth. If grandfather hadn't disliked his position as head so much, the sixth toe probably would have been lucky for him. Come to think of it, I heard about some country where it's believed people with polydactyly should be treated as gods and revered. <laughs> oh, we're like going on more tangents here. Okay, 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 Ryukushi. This is beside the point, but it's fairly common in mystery novels for a corpse to be burned to hide its identity. But I guess that in Grandfather's case, just toasting it wouldn't be enough. And Grandfather's body was not simply burnt. It was just like Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi, and the thing that had been stabbed into Kanakun's chest. One of those demon ice picks was stuck into his forehead. Really? Interesting. Well, again, Battler, if my if I may borrow your catchphrase that you like to say, and spin the chessboard around, it could have just as easily been a pre-prepared corpse with polydactyly to make you think that it was him. <laughs> and that's the whole reason why they left the feet exposed. Because, and burned it this way. So that's another thing that could be a hidden body here. The head's ring is not on his finger. So the letter last night was telling the truth. Father would probably be horribly disappointed. So the last... The kids are the only blood relatives of his last alive. Jeez. You said the profiles were updated? Let's check. Yep, his profile is red now. Jesus Christ. Burned in the incinerator with a weapon resembling an ice pick sticking out of his forehead. The old sorcerer's wish vanished before it could be granted. He always knew that this was one possible result of his risky gamble. So yeah, I, I, I'm just saying it's a possibility that this corpse here was made us to think that it's Kinzo. It was prepared earlier. Or was simply another member of his family. And was specifically made for us to think that it was him. Like, who knows? Maybe even... Like, maybe Rudolph also had polydactyly. You know? Maybe this could be Rudolph, you know? And the one killed could have been someone else. And the grandfather could very well still be alive. How many people do we have left alive? And it's the kids, uh, Natsuki. Um, two servants, and Nanjo.
Natsuhi-san let her head droop and closed her eyes tightly. Oh wow, we got 28 people. That's awesome. Thank you all so much. Seriously, you guys are so cool. This room had been also, also become a vital crime scene for us to hand over to the police. It was decided that we would leave Grandfather's corpse here and lock the room, sealing it. It isn't clear when Grandfather's corpse started burning in the incinerator. This is according to Genji, the strength of the flames hadn't been that strong. The body must have started burning a long time ago. So that the stench could slowly creep out of the furnace and fill the room bit by bit, eventually pouring out and climbing up the staircase. Minmus. Well, first of all, he wouldn't have had six fingers if he just six toes. And I don't think Kinzo would believe in that because he's all about, you know, even though he's really sexist in his possibility, in his, uh, you know, policies of who inherits what, uh, aside from that, which is a big aside from that, he believes in people in his family earning things by their own merit. He, he's, he's an odd, he's an odd duck a bit. His old fashionedness kind of clashes with his own ideals, but I think he's too old to see that. I think. Putting aside whether he was rare or well done. Oh my god, what the fuck? What the actual fuck? Valor. Jeez. Grandfather had been brought out, killed, and burned. Even though he had sta started out locked away in the closet room. A closed room created by his auto lock. There's probably no doubting this. However, according to Genji-san, the boiler room is usually locked. The possibility that someone outside our group had snuck in and committed the crime was overwhelmingly high. And this, there's a good chance that this person was walking around with something like a master key. After all, the doors and windows throughout this mansion had been checked. But despite that, the culprit was able to strut around the mansion freely. D oh, a new song. Does this crime confirm that a 19th person exists? There's still that contradiction, since they're trying to tout, tout their existence without even showing themselves once. A, a call along with Kiri sans chessboard theory. I've been using this contradiction to deny the existence of a 19th person. By spinning the chessboard around once more, the very fact that this crime makes it perfectly obvious that a 19th person exists means that the existence of the 19th person is even less plausible. As long as that 19th person doesn't show themselves in front of us. If the copper could get Grandfather out through the door sealed by the receipt, if they could kill Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi from the other side of a door sealed by a chain, then they could possibly go as far to create a fictional 19th person through strange tricks and devices? If we still want to believe that the culprit is among the 18, then the list of suspects here has grown very short. Exactly. The four of us kids, Aunt Natsuhi, Genji, Kumasawa Bachan, and Dr. Nanjo. One of these people has to be the culprit. The only one physically capable of it would be Genji. But, but uh, like, seriously, but it can't be him. Uh, like, I really don't think it's him, Valor. I really think there's someone else here. At least one more person. At least. One of these people has to be the culprit. Wait, we can't be sure of that. Just a second ago, we started, started doubting whether the corpse here was actually Grandfather's, right? Maybe we can think of other bodies in the same way. Exactly! Oh my god, Battler! Oh my god, are you- Battler, are you doing my theory? Are you really gonna do my theory, Battler? Oh, awesome! Thank you! Yay! Okay. Let's see. For example, the first six all have their faces horribly smashed. 
Some of their bodies had been kept enough of their faces for us to confirm who they were, but that old bastard, for example, had lost his entire face, although the whole thing had been neatly peeled off. We only figured which body was which by their clothes and surroundings. Did the culprit prepare a fake body beforehand and alter it to make it look like they died, even though they were actually hiding somewhere after committing the crime? It may sound ridiculous, but it wouldn't be an impossible trick to pull off. It's too early to give in to this 19th person. No, this witch. Maria chan. You mustn't stare so fixedly anymore. Come on, Batlakun. I'm worried about Kanon's condition, and we mustn't remain in a place like this any longer than necessary. Let us return. Oh my god, away! That would be too hilarious! Oh my god! <laughs> then you would be able to stop laughing if you replaced every instance of. Uh, she was saying, if you replaced every instance of witch to, to bitch, that would be freaking hilarious! <laughs> then you wouldn't be able to stop laughing! Oh my god, oh wait! No, 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 no! The legend of the golden bitch! <laughs> Jeez! <laughs> Oh my god! Jeez! Oh god! That would be too funny! No, stop it! Alright, back to the story. Woo! Mario didn't go out with everyone else, but remained in the boiler room. The thing she was staring so fixedly at probably wasn't Grandfather's body. But that demon ice pick sticking out of his forehead. It's probably the sort of item that an enthusiast couldn't bear to ignore. I tapped her on the head. Oi, Maria. Hey, Maria. Beatrice no What's Beatrice after? Is it all of our lives? Beatrice will revive very soon. At that time, none shall be left alive. <laughs> How can you laugh at something like that? Do you think you're the only one who's safe? Why don't you feel like you're in danger? Why aren't you scared? Oh god, okay, so that's why. Beatrice made a promise. Maria She said she's gonna take me to the Golden Land. I bet that's where the gold is, the Golden Land. That's that's what, that's what the gold vault is probably called. I mean, it's a wonderful place where you have no obligations. Everyone's always together, and everyone is always nice to everyone else. Maria was I'm looking forward to it. That time will come very soon now. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jesus Christ! Just what kind of person is Maria? Oh God. I only know what Maria was like six years ago when she was three. She was once pure and obedient, a good kid. This new Maria six years later and the Maria I knew didn't seem to fit together. Just who is she, this witch who calls herself Maria? To Maria, who ostensibly believes in the witch, this series of unsolvable crimes is proof that the witch actually exists. Every time something occurs that would be difficult for a human, it becomes a little harder for the rest of us to not believe in Beatrice. It must be an intense pleasure for Maria to see her relatives, who once firmly denied the witch's existence, start acknowledging that the witch's existence one by one. Is that why she's in high spirits? Maria. Maria. Let me ask one more time. You're probably answered the same anyway. But I'll ask just once more. Yesterday, you were given a letter in the Rose Garden. Who gave it to you? Like I said, Beatrice! Butler still doesn't believe. Oh. Maria only repeated what she had already said. Maria met with the 19th person, the witch. Was there really a 19th person? Or did one of the 18 just get her to say that? All that's certain is that Maria had been with the rest of us constantly, has always had an alibi, and hasn't done anything suspicious. She's simply overjoyed at being made Beatrice's messenger, and certainly isn't the 19th person. Supposedly. That's right. I wonder what's written in the letter we picked up in Aunt Eva and Uncle Hideyoshi's room. Aunt Natsuhi should still have it with her. And there's a chapter break. In the end... Kanan-kun did not regain consciousness, even though Dr. Nanjo and the rest did all they could to heal him. Of course, there was very little that could be done in an island like this without medicine or proper facilities. However, Kanan was the only human to ever confront the culprit. Yeah, that clock was huge. Jeez. If only he could give us some kind of clue. Did he, did he write anything with his blood? Phoenix Wright style? Like, did he? Uh. However, at the time they carried Cannon away, it was already too late. Okay, guys. Yep, I think, uh... Found in the boiler room with the weapon presenting ice pick sticking out of the chest. How presumptuous of lowly furniture like that. Oh, fuck off. Cannon is a certified badass. Yeah, th there's no zero in it, OA, but basically, like that, Danganronpa and Phoenix Wright, did, they did a lot of messages written in blood. I wonder if he wrote anything. Look at this chart here. Look at this. Oh god, it's just the kids, Natsuhi, Nanjo Genji and Kumasawa. Oh god, jeez.
All right, you guys. I think now is as good a time as any to um, leave it for today. I hope uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, tonight's stream. I know I had a really good time. And I hope you all did too. We'll continue with this in uh, two days with uh, the results of uh, whatever Nanjo could uh, find from this, uh, his whatever he could do as an aut autopsy. So until next time in two days, so long. Farewell, Avrita saying good night. You are all the sweetest of hearts. See ya. <laughs>